Hey everyone, Brandon here. Before we start, I want to say it turns out I wrote too long of an episode. You know, the goodness of verse 5 of Psalm 23 is just so good. It grabbed my heart and I just wrote too much. So keep an eye out for Cup Overflows Part 2 next week. With a little extra time, I just wanted to say thanks again for listening to The Well. This marks our 15th episode and a total of 50,000 engagements. Now that's pretty surprising, considering this was a project that started with me in a closet with my phone during the stay-at-home order, trying to gain a little bit of sanity by stepping into a deeper time with him. So thanks. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being a part of this. And if you've not subscribed yet, you know, if you're engaging on YouTube or some other way, just take a moment and subscribe to the podcast. It'll keep you up to date on each episode. They'll land right in your inbox. And they'll give you a few extra episodes, like some of our reflective shorts. And if you haven't gotten a chance to rate us, please do. It'll help others find this podcast. Now, with all that aside, I just wanted to again say thank you for listening. Thank you for your comments of support and all the stories about how this is impacting you. If you have a story, a thought, or a comment, please shoot me an email at maturity at saddleback.com. It'll be in the show notes. It really brings me so much joy to hear how these reflections are helping you catch your breath during a crazy time, you know, and really finding powerful moments with our Good Shepherd. Truth be told, I'm really needing some deeply connected time with him more and more these days, and I'm guessing that's the same for you. So let's continue to lean into him this week with everything we're up against. And now, enjoy My Cup Overflows, Part 1. The Lord is my shepherd, my cup overflows. Psalm 23, 1 and 5. Hello, and welcome to The Well, a spiritual growth podcast from Saddleback Church. My name is Brennan Bathauer, and I'm excited to continue our journey through Psalm 23, the poem of the shepherd. This is your opportunity to spend the next few minutes with your shepherd to find health and rest for your soul. To start, get away from the noise, find a quiet place, and get settled. If you need any extra time, just hit pause. The Lord is my shepherd, my cup overflows. Psalm 23, 1 and 5. The poet is nearing the culmination of his poem here. Coming out of the valley of the shadow of death, guided by the shepherd's rod and staff. The rugged and tired sheep now becomes an honored dinner guest. Welcome to a beautiful feast prepared just for him. And now, the cup, where valuable drink would be offered, is being poured out until it spills down the sides. This is the shepherd being overly generous, even to the point of irresponsibility, pouring out more and more, pouring drink all over the table as the cup just cannot hold all that the shepherd wants to give, giving you more than enough. More than enough. What a striking phrase, more than enough. Sometimes it's easy to feel like we have to scrape and claw to get by, just barely making it from one day to the next by the skin of our teeth. You may feel like this at the end of the day, with barely enough energy to turn off the light and plop yourself into bed, barely enough finances to balance the budget, barely enough to wake up in the morning, maybe even less than enough. But this passage is painting a different picture about who God is and the life he offers. More than enough full to overflowing, abundance even in the world of scarcity. There are a lot of cultures that practice extreme generosity. There are glimpses in every culture. But when I read this passage, my mind always goes to a warm home, sitting at a red tablecloth, 
with the smell of garlic bread and cheese and pasta. God's character of giving here, reflected in the non-stop giving of an Italian grandmother. Dish after dish, plate after plate, cup after cup. There's no use in refusing, in saying that you're full. She'll just laugh, head back to the kitchen, and emerge with more. There's no scarcity here. No being careful to save. No restraint. Just abundant goodness pouring out of the kitchen with her ever-growing excitement. Her joy is in providing. Her face beams as you try to make space for that next meatball, or that last piece of oil-drenched bread, or the fresh-made spumoni. Abundance and joy. Generosity in a scarce world. This is the image shown here. The shepherd's overabundance poured out for you. Yes, there are times to be careful. Times to tighten the belt. Let's be honest, times to diet. There are times to say, give me today my daily bread. But there are also times to just open the floodgates. To feast. To enjoy the grand banquet. To bask in the more than enough that your father, your shepherd has for you. So take a minute to shush the voices of hurry, of penny-pinching, of miserly protection, and fears of scarcity. Let the Father's overabundance pour over you. The Lord is my shepherd, my cup overflows. Psalm 23, 1 and 5. Now that may have been a hard exercise, especially amidst our current crises, to soak in God's overabundance to you. It can be hard to get past our current obstacles, that financial unknown, that feeling of tiredness, those fears of having enough to get by. But this is where gratitude Living in the reality of God's more than enough can be the most helpful. Gratitude isn't just about positive thinking, as if that would solve your problems. No, gratitude is a countercultural practice, a discipline, a way of shaping how you see the world. Gratitude means seeing the world not as a battlefield to get what you can, but a garden where you can walk in the cool of the day. We are not first and foremost consumers, but children of the King. This is why, in Matthew 6, Jesus says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Instead, seek after His kingdom, His righteousness, and all these other things will be given to you as well. Jesus is saying, stop worrying. I'll handle these little things. Focus on the bigger things beyond them. Gratitude for what God has offered us, viewing our lives through the lenses of more than enough, allows us to focus on the bigger things of God's mission for us in this world. And he promises, if you seek his kingdom, his way. First, all of the other trivial things will be handled. So let's take off our consumer lenses of not enough. Set those aside for now. And pick up the lenses of more than enough. Of my cup overflows. Look at your world through these eyes. Take a few moments to reflect on your life. When has your cup overflowed in your past? What memories are full to the brim and beyond with laughter, joy, and sweetness? What memories have you maybe buried or forgotten 
because they don't fit whatever narrative you are choosing. Maybe your justified anger or grudge at a parent or family member means you've chosen to bury past memories of great joy you had with them. Maybe your feelings of insufficiency now have covered up times of plenty in the past. Bring the moments of overflow of the past into your mind. Then ask yourself, in what circumstances of life is your cup overflowing now? What parts of your life show God's overabundance, where he's just pouring and pouring so much that you can't even contain it all? Where have you been struck recently with beauty, so much beauty that your eyes can't even contain it? Where have you had moments of closeness with another or with your father that filled you, even if you didn't acknowledge it at that moment? And if all of this is coming up blank, if you're fatigued and broken and feeling like everything has gone wrong, if all you have is life right now, your cup is still overflowing. Believe it or not, you are, right now, experiencing God's overabundance. With each breath you take, you fill 300 million air chambers in your lungs. The beating heart within you is pumping 2,000 gallons of life-giving blood a day, every day, for every single day you've been alive. As you think through these things right now, 86 billion neurons fire electric signals at the speed of light all around your brain. And at the sound of my voice right now, over 12,000 nerve cells in each ear are activated. Your God has given over and above all you can hope for or even imagine. Reflect. Bring those memories to mind. Think of your current reality. Even just sit in stillness and think of all the overabundance you are experiencing with every breath and each moment. Take some time to say thank you. Thank you, Father, for your overabundance. You give above, beyond all my understanding. Hear my thanks to you today. Accept my deepest appreciation. When I feel overcome with not enough, please remind me of all the ways you fill my cup to the brim and then overflow it. As your child, you not only provide for me, but you shower me with goodness. Open my eyes wider and wider that I may see all you've blessed me with and that I may rest more and more in your sufficiency. In Jesus' name, amen.